for unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. I read up to verse 8. Uh, this story uh, I'm going to share in conjunction with last, last week's sermon. Uh, last week I preached the word the sorrow will be turned into joy. And as I preached the sermon, uh, all the sorrows and all the troubles that you are facing is going to turn into joy and happiness in your life. And as our brother Mensa, as he was doing MC, he summarized the last week's sermon. When you receive the seed in your heart, you need to take care of the seed. This seed is the word of God. So you need to water on the seed and give fertilizer give full attention so that this seed may take its time until it germinate and grow as a big tree to yield the fruit. Today I want to tell you four different fields of our heart. Some of you may wonder why God doesn't help me in my life or why God doesn't work in, in me. And Although I come to church, listen to the words. But whenever I face challenge difficulties, I do not see any uh, improvement. Or although I receive the seed, the word of God, but it doesn't really change and help me out. Uh, there is a specific reason why the seed does not work in your heart. So today I would like to share that story uh, in the Bible how you can make your field as a good field so that you can uh, multiply 50-fold, 100-fold fruits. Before I get into the actual uh, story of the book of Acts, let's open the book of Luke as an appetizer for today's sermon. Do you like appetizer? Before you, before you get into the main course, yes, this is going to be the appetizer for today's sermon. Luke chapter 8, verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. Uh, we need to pay attention on the parables of Jesus. When Jesus spoke about parable, this is purposely made story. It's a made story by the purpose of Jesus. Then we need to think uh, deeply what's the meaning of that. Verse 5 A sower went out to sow his seed and he sowed some fell by the wayside and it was trampled down 
and the birds came and birds of the air devoured them. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Yes, here in the Bible, Jesus describes four fields of our hearts. When this seed of God sowed on the ground, not all of us, not all the Christians have the same type of field. Jesus described four different fields of our ground. There are different types of hearts, even amongst our church brothers and sisters. The first ground is the wayside. Wayside is the place. Uh, many people trample and use so the soil is very hard. So even if you sow the seed on the wayside, it doesn't come into the soil of the ground. So seed is going to be remain on the floor of the ground. Soon after, birds of the air come and devour it. What does this wayside mean? Someone who has very stubborn and high-hearted those who have all those who are filled with their own thoughts and understanding and became very hard. Although the seed are sowed on the ground, it doesn't come into the ground and it remains on the floor of the ground. So the Birds of the air represents Satan comes and devours it. In some of the Bible, in some of the birds, these birds describes as a Christian. But in this chapter of the verse, these birds represents Satan. The, the God of the air. So this Satan came and devoured this seed. The seed represents the word of God. So there are some people who are used to follow their own thought, understanding their own way of living. This wayside field never uh, never how can I say, uh, flipped over or not, never taken care by the farmer. If farmer wants to sow the seed and expecting the fruits or the crops, they first till the ground for this seed to be able to germinate in the soft ground. Before the farmer sow the seed, we have to give them enough moisture. But this wayside field has not been taken care of by the farmer. For farmer to 
sow the seed, he knows what to do till the ground and flip over and remove all the unnecessary things of the ground. But this wayside is very strong and stubborn. It does not receive any seed under the ground. And although the seed are sowed, this wayside, the seed is going to be disappear without any signs. And their second field is the rocky field. Some are fell on rocks. And on the rock there is no moisture. So it is going to dry and wither. If you read verse 13, it explains but the ones on the rock are those who when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root but believe for a while and in time of temptation for a way so, so the, the rocky field represents for those who hear with joy in the beginning. When you receive the word, you need to remove the stones and give enough water so this seed can germinate and spread the root on the ground. But soon after when temptation comes, this uh, seed which was fallen on the rock is going to dry and fall away. And the third field is the thorn field. If seed are sown on the thorn field, verse 14, now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with care, riches, and pleasure of life, and bring no fruits, no maturity. These are the people who are not interested in the spiritual life. They are more focused on the care, riches, prosperity, physical life, and pleasure of life. So although they come come to church, listen to the word, those who are focused on the life of the prosperity of the world, then when the desire of the world come, they choke this fruit a seed or not to resist the the seed to yield the fruit. So this seed is going to uh, not going to bear any fruit. But there are the finer good fields. If you sow the seed of the good ground, when this seed fell on the good ground, Having heard that word with noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So this good ground bear hundredfold crops. 
If one seed come into the ground of this field, they always share good testimony. good changes of their life. And they will share uh, many blissful words in their hearts. So there are four different fields of our can you tell which ground, which field is your ground? Is there anyone think, oh, I, I, my heart is a good field, good ground? Yes. Oh, my heart seems uh, rocky ground, rocky. When I receive, I receive with joy. But as I see situation, problem, I easily live away from the world. Or don't, don't Although I listen to the words, I have so many temptations in my heart. So many desires of this human flesh. So this desire choked this seed. Wayside. Oh, I am too stubborn. My heart is too hard. So this seed does not penetrate in my heart. It only comes on the floor of my heart and remains. It doesn't show any change. Very sad. Yes. There are anyway four different fields of different heart condition. But everyone, do you know how you can make your heart to become a good field? There is only one way that you can change wayside, rocky field, thorn field into the good ground. Can you tell how you can make your heart to be a good ground? Only one way. We are the ground. Our hearts are like a ground. So me, myself, cannot make all this bad ground into a good ground. Although you may think now you are a good ground, but if you don't have this, if you don't have this, your ground can be changed into thorn bushes. And messy ground. What is important? For any types of ground, they need who? They need farmer. Amen. They need tiller. They need a good master who can maintain, look after this ground. So, any one of you would like to become a good ground to yield the hundred fours of crops. What do you need? You need a spiritual farmer, spiritual leader in your life. This spiritual farmer is going to till the ground. This spiritual farmer is going to remove the stone out of this ground. If this spiritual farmer see the stones, they are going to till and 
Oh, get rid of all these unnecessary things. Although you come to church, service, if you separate yourself away from the spiritual farmer, if you keep a far distance away from the spiritual farmer. Whenever you see spiritual farmer is coming to your ground with the showbells and uh, what else? Showbells and many other tools to till the ground and look after. Actually, ground cannot run away, but this human ground has two legs quickly run away. This ground, this farmer is coming again to kill me. Oh, this farmer is coming to nag at me. This farmer is coming to or flip this ground over. Let me run away. Let me hide myself. And defeat. This human ground have two legs. They can go everywhere. So as much as you avoid this farmer's care. You may start your spiritual life as a very good ground. But if you don't receive the care from the ground or from the farmer, good ground also can be changed into a bad ground. But regardless of your bad situation, you may have stubbornness now. You may have this arrogant mind. You may think that I am the best. I know the word of God. You may have any misunderstanding or this unnecessary uh, heart before God. But if you come closer and receive the care by this spiritual farmer, this farmer is going to till the ground. Ah, this ground is too strong. I need to make this this ground to be soft. Oh, this ground is too dry. I need to uh, give more moisture. Oh, this soil has no nutrition. Let me put some uh, fertilizer. So, as long as you are taken care by this farmer, all the bad ground can be changed into good ground to yield fruit fruitfully. Amen. Yes, I hope you all come close to the spiritual farmer so that your heart can be taken care of by the servant and the pastor in the church. So uh, today I read the book of Acts. Let's get into the, the main dish now. Did you enjoy appetizer? The book of Acts chapter 8. Today I read this book of Acts from chapter 1. Thinking about our church situation now. So when I read, I could discover a very thankful lesson. When Jesus was on the earth, he was a great physician. He was a great uh, performer. 
Ang mungluenda ng mga lisu. He was a great teacher. Ang mfunzesi. He revived all dead things. Mapusa tongkel ng kfi. And he healed all kinds of patients. At pisa lop tongkel ng kabutet kulan. While Jesus was ministering on the earth. Asan na ikon sa akin Jesus na minsabat sini. Jesus him alone was able to work. Yena Jesus ay talo ko na kusabi. But his disciple now come to believe in Jesus as our oh. Savior and as our Messiah. Now we have found the fact that we have found the fact that we have found So when these the, uh, disciples learned all this faith, oh. all faith in Jesus, but we have found the fact that we have found Jesus is now saying, I am going to go back to my father. So if I uh, if I am ascending to heaven, nang inyo sa lahat ng suri, you will receive Holy Spirit. Nilendasan mong nilingil mong ilusyon mo alam ko eh. If you receive Holy Spirit, you will be able to live same like me. Nasabi mong ilusyon mo alam ko eh. Nasabi ako na kapili sa ko. Last week, uh, the United Africa Church service during the Africa Church service, Reverend Pat preached this sermon. Anyone receive the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ in our hearts. We can live now as a little Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you now all little Jesus? If you receive salvation, if you receive clear forgiveness of sin, you will be able to live such powerful life of Christ. So when I read chapter 1, Jesus was teaching his disciple, the day you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive the strength and power to work like me. Let's read Acts chapter 1. Verse 8. For you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Kota ni ndo kwa lusa ni manja na seti gile gini malungu Nyo ufakas ba meche usale ma na seti utia longe Na sasa maria uze mese tunien kwa nisa When you receive this Holy Spirit Na ni mungela malungu wene You shall be witness to Jesus Nda ufakas ma Jesus And you will be spreading out this gospel in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Na bena misal vangeli Jerusalem and Judea na sa Samaria uz nemes nemes na beno ka. This is the main purpose of our life. Leon yun ang to sa nang jomek pila ba ito? This is the great mission of Jesus. In to sa nang sa nang piyak pila ba Jesus? Before Jesus ascended, na pangus Jesus yun sa nang suri. Left this last mission to us, to his disciples. Then today, if you receive this Jesus Christ, if you receive salvation, now you become his disciples. We are all his disciples as a born again brothers and sisters. Then, if you if you receive this. Great mission. Now we wherever we go, we can spread out this gospel and preach this Christ, the salvation of Christ. But everyone, if you are expecting all good paved asphalt road while you are living this Christian journey, that is a great misunderstanding. Oh, now I believe in Jesus Christ. Now I accepted Jesus as my true Savior. Now I believe Jesus cleansed all my sins and made me wholly righteous. I do clearly believe and have faith in Jesus. Yes. And while you are living for this Christ, if you 
are expecting all good paved road that's a great misunderstanding this book of acts shows us how our Christian's journey will be Indeed, as Jesus prophesied, these disciples they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And they started to speak tongues. This speaking tongue is different with other churches doing these days. So this speaking tongue was for the foreign people to listen to the gospel of Christ. So the reason why the Holy Spirit opened their tongues is maybe for spreading the gospel of Christ. But As Jesus prophesied, as Jesus gave us the great mission, you will be witness to me. To Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, all the Judea, and Judea, and Samaria, and Samaria, and until the end of the earth. So this is God, Jesus, great mission. So this speaking tongue was also given to all the disciples of Jesus to speak in different dialect, different language to witness to Jesus Christ. Amen. These are the story in Gen- uh, the book of Acts chapter 2. And verse 41. Verse 41. Chapter 2 verse 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. When these disciples followed the word of Jesus, when they listened to this great mission and moved their footsteps, preaching the gospel, spreading the word of Jesus, we can see this power of the Holy Spirit walk very amazingly into this life of his disciples. Amen. Amen. So these Jews, they repented. You know how difficult these Jews to believe in Jesus? Even today, Jesus as a Messiah and Savior. But these many Jews who persecuted Jesus repented and believed Jesus. This was indeed a great, great miracle. Many people focused on the physical prosperity. Many Christians nowadays are deceived by evil Satan to focus on the life of the earth. So when they see signs, healing, prosperity, getting job, and blind opened, they all go and follow such churches. I'm not saying those are bad. But the greatest mission of Jesus is spreading the gospel of Christ. First is receiving true salvation. First mission is witnessing how Jesus died on the cross and cleansed all of our sin, made us holy, righteous. We 
without having this clear faith. Many people just say, accepted Jesus as my personal savior, they just satisfied with such swallow level of understanding of Bible. And they quickly now pursue the desire of their human friends. They are not the true children of God. Unfortunately, they are helped and guided by evil spirit. Because even evil spirit transforms itself as an angel of God. So his people will be helped by this evil spirit. So this evil spirit is going to transform as an angel of God, showing miracles, performing all the healing, deliverance, and helping his people of the world. But as you read Matthew chapter 6, Lord, is it 7? Lord, Lord, I have prophesied in your name, I have done many wonders in your name, I have cast the demons in your name. Although they have performed all such miracles and great jobs, Jesus will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me. You are who do the Lord is deed. Jesus does not recognize people who is performing miracles, casting the demons, or doing many wonders in the name of Jesus. Those performances can be done even through angels of Satan. Evil Satan of this God of the world. But the what, what Jesus really wants for us preaching the gospel of Christ and baptizing in the name of Jesus and the remission of sin. This remission of sin is what? How my sins can be forgiven once for all eternally? How can I possess this righteousness of God? How filthy, sinful, evil human like me can be born again as a true righteous human? So in book of Acts chapter 2, Peter is preaching that gospel of Christ. Now we send the apostles to go to Peter and a little from in that press. Repent and let everyone be baptized in the name of Jesus. Christ Jesus for the remission of sin. Petro Lovati Pen Pugani Patatisha Nove Hamunya Mumia Kamela Jesu. So when Peter preached this gospel of Christ, these Jews, they repented and received forgiveness of sin. And these Jews thinking that I have to follow commandments so that I can become righteous. These Jews were thinking and bound by the law of Moses. We have to keep and follow this commandment. I can only receive blessing through doing good works. They all repented from their self-righteousness to receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ based on the 100% faith of Jesus. So on that day, when Peter preached, 3,000 people received salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the works of the Holy Spirit. The works of the Holy Spirit is not healing, deliverance, great miracles happen in our life. The essential and initial great works of the Holy Spirit is saving souls. Preaching the gospel of Christ. 
Why they are doing that? Mà mình biết là anh kêu đùa. Verse 42. Chapter 2, verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers. Bạn thân sẽ làm cho nó bắt lặng nghe lại tiếng phun xuyên tiếng apostoli. Nó sẽ được lên nên nó sẽ được phun lên xin qua nó sẽ bị thật ra rồi. Yes, this is the initial church's image. This is the proper church of Christ. Come gather together, listen to the word through apostle, servant of God, their doctrines, and having fellowship, listening to the word from the servant of God. But the apostle And they sharing the breaking of bread. This breaking of bread is not only the physical bread. This bread represents body of Jesus Christ and the word of God. So when you gather, come to church, share the word, and share testimony how God worked in my life. I was having this trouble and that problem. Oh, when I believed and when I received this word, what made me whole? What made me overcome this trouble? So they were busy breaking the bread. And they gathered for the prayer. This is the true image of church. But Satan keep on withdrawing our church brothers and sisters. Resist us together in the church. Resist us to more focus on the life of the world. And verse 43. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Bong evan befigelo besa mati mangaliso ni pona kaliso ni nyeti tendi wa apostoli. After they receive salvation, after they receive forgiveness of sin, based on the true faith, now they see signs and works, miracles, wonders through apostles. Now is about telling you, born and misbehaved, born and gallows, and it's mangalis on the apostol. Forty-four. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. Born and left back, born and back to beg, and it's the one in Zawoni. Benedisa na itim pasada. And sold their possessions and good and divided them among all as anyone had need. But said Benedisa, it's time to nanga mabulas, nanga itim pasada. But the love of Benedisa na galio malubu, and we put some loan along with him. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Onge malang babe kunsela jare kila ane mitebeni vanti tioni babe vagashela ane makaya balze tioni ngiti tiole chabula wo na leto begi. These are the image of the true church of the Bible. Sharing their possession and also serve each other and sharing the word. Continue daily with one accord in the temple. But some of the people think our oh, church is not the place only Sunday goes. And the church is not the place only you have to attend the Sunday service. The true image of the church is frequently daily gathering and praying and pursuing the works of God. But what I'm trying to say today. When this Holy Spirit walked powerfully in this church, God doesn't allow this church to have only peaceful, joyful time. 
in the book of Acts chapter 3. In what's in him, seven apostles at Lord 3. Peter raised this lame man. Petros, Mr. Lim, Mr. Lim, and these great works God continue. But starting from chapter 4, Peter and John were arrested. Petro and John never bore so anti Pazman. Why? God was with them. They were preaching and working for the Christ. But why Peter and John were arrested? What wrong did they do? Why God did protect them? Why this tribulation persecution come and attack this church? Sometimes God gives us tribulation. Why we are preaching the gospel? Why we are running only for the gospel works? Sometimes God gives us trouble. God gives us difficult situations. God sometimes also persecutes us. Why? In Acts chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, 7, continue. Each and every chapter, there are the serious persecutions. These apostles were persecuted and arrested. And more especially, this Saul was very uh, passionate to persecute these ch children of Christ. So when Stephen, Stephen was very spiritual deacon in the church. Stephen, Stephen was he, he was not even a pastor. Stephen he was not even an apostle. His spirit was touched by the spirit of God. And he was very loyal to God. And he was very passionate preacher. So Stephen preached in front of many people. Stephen was So these high priests. Uh, these Jews, they persecuted Stephen. So they were afraid of this Stephen because they were so bored preaching in this gospel. What he was speaking was very attractive by the people of the Jews. So these people of the Jews, they were so angry when they listened to the words of Stephen. So they started to stone him and kill this Stephen. This Stephen, he was martyred. Uh, he was martyrized. Martyrized and he was killed as a good a spiritual servant of God. Why God is giving us such a trouble now? Oh, why God is hindering us to go move forward of the works of Christ? When this church and all the apostles, even the Deacon of the church, we are preaching the word and spreading this gospel powerfully. Why God didn't protect Stephen? Why this Stephen must be stoned and killed? Let's suppose if such things happen in our church, why we were working for this gospel? Why our brothers and sisters preaching the word of Christ? At one side, God works very powerfully. Through brothers and sisters witnessing, people come and receive forgiveness of sin, and they share the joy of their hearts. And the more member added in the church, and some sick people are healed, and people who was in trouble get uh, 
delivered. In one side, God is working very powerfully through the church. And when God sees this good, when we see this good news mission church nowadays, although we have this COVID-19 pandemic, throughout this season we could reach more than one point. 7 billion people in the entire world. It had never happened before. In the entire church history, there was no even one preacher who could reach up to 1.1, even 1 billion number of the people. But during this season of COVID pandemic, when people are all locked down, only through this Church of Christ, Church of God, Good News Mission, we could spread out this gospel through air, uh, broadcasting, and through internet, all the social media. Many people share their the joy of their salvation. And last week, he, uh, Reverend Park had the meeting with the, the president of Kenya in the president office and the ministers of Kenya country. And preach the gospel to them, and people receive salvation. Not only Kenya, one country, even in Eswatini, in all of the world, the the government officials and the leader of the countries are having a one-on-one -on -one fellowship and listen to the gospel. In one side, God is working very vividly, powerfully through this church, like saying exactly the church of this uh, the Peter and uh, the the old apostles' time. But at the same time, we see some tribulation. And we face this difficult challenge. We face also the troubles and difficult seasons. But this is not a difficult at all. Through Stephen's mother, through Stephen were mortalized, this gospel could be spread all over the world as she just spoke. Let's read the verse one by one, check chapter 8. Verse 1. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Now Saul was consenting to his death, to Stephen's death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except for except the apostles. Saula, Saula, the woman who now goes to Abelaus, the Stephen, all the little lamb and battles at Jerusalem, the Clara Shuper, the Timula, the Pum, Uncle Macola, the Pante, the Apostoli, Asara, the Articles, the Jungle, the Sajutian, the Samaria. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. And as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering every house and dragging off men and women, committing them to prison. Oh, why God is giving so much tribulation and persecution to this church of God? Is it because they didn't serve God? Is it because they lived for themselves? Because these apostles, they are corrupted without preaching the gospel of Christ. Why this church of God pursued 
the glory of God, working powerfully and preaching the gospel, they face so much trouble. Although we didn't face such havoc or trouble as much as this chapter 8. But recently, because of construction school, we had we faced some of the challenges in the school. We called them, started this program to help them to, to, to really take care and foster for their future. But these young people, they were going, coming against us and trouble in many ways. So while we are facing this challenge, I started to think, why God is giving us this challenge and trouble? But is it because we are lazy to preach the word? Is it because we are corrupted? Is it because God, you are not satisfied with us? God was showing me this book of Acts chapter 8. When this church of Jerusalem preaching the gospel and living all the good works, Stephen, Stephen was mortalized, Stephen and this uh, power and made a havoc of the church. Entering and entering every house, dragging men and women, committing them to prison. But when you read verse 4, here is the secret. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 If Stephen were dead, Stephen if they saw the deacon of their church were stoned and killed while he was preaching the gospel, if they have the normal sense, what are all they are supposed to do now? They, they all are supposed to shut their mouth. Isn't it? They all have to give up. They all have to hide themselves. Oh, this is now too serious. We can't do any more. We have to hide ourselves. This is, this is the normal procedure. This is they are supposed to, supposed to hide themselves and busy getting into the basement. And stop preaching the gospel. Until this situation becomes calm down. But these disciples of Jesus, what do they do now? They were all scattered. Do you know why? Do you know why God gave them this persecution? To fulfill the promise of Jesus. To fulfill the will of God. God wanted to spread this disciple to everywhere. If you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive the power and go to Jerusalem, go to Samaria, and go everywhere. Judea until the end of the earth. But these people, they were staying in Jerusalem. They didn't think of going out somewhere else. They stayed within Jerusalem. They were contented 
preaching the word in Jerusalem. They were just happy and satisfied seeing how God works powerfully in this Jerusalem. Although here and there there were tribulation and difficulty, but they could see how God helped them and overcome the trouble within Jerusalem. But God wanted to expand their territory. Go stay in Jerusalem. Go everywhere. Go to Judea. And go and uh, the Samaria. And even go to the Gentiles to preach the gospel. So they couldn't stay in Jerusalem anymore. Because in Jerusalem church there were serious persecutions. All these disciples who were scattered, they continue to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the great mission of Jesus. We will never give up. Because not because we are strong. Not because we are very special. This church is church of God. Amen. Amen. This church was established on the foundation of Jesus Christ. God sent me as a pastor of this church. And God sent and gathered all of you as a member of the church to establish the body of Jesus Christ. No matter how our enemy tried to stumble us down. No matter how evil Satan tried to destroy and block the way of our good works. We will do more. We will do greater works. Because, not because we are strong. Not because we are very special. Because this is the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. No one can touch, no one can harm. The more they disturb us, the more we will be prosperous. Amen. 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 You are supposed to say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So anyone who unite your heart with this church of God, while you are working same, for the same will of God, God will overflow the heaven blessing upon you. When you join these great works of church, this is not Pastor David will. This is not Reverend Park's will. This is not the plan of Good News Mission Church. This is the great mission of Jesus Christ. Do you know why we started this Sessori Music School? To teach them music and to nurture them to become a good musician to help them their future but more than all these things to preach the gospel to save their soul why do you know why we started this construction school to preach the gospel to them to save this young people's soul to them to know the true gospel of Christ so that they can also become a little Jesus and become a little disciple of Jesus go out to spread out this gospel everyone verse 8 I will read verse 5, 6, 7, 8 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For a clean spirit crying with a loud voice came out of 
many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Let's read verse 8 all together. Verse 8, ready, go. And there was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week service, what was the topic? Your sorrow will turn into joy. Amen. 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 And verse 8 says what? Verse 8, you will see. There was great joy in that city. God is saying there was great joy in good news. Manjini Church. Amen. 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 Yes, we have no lamentation at all. We have no sorrow at all. We have no tribulation at all. We, with Christ, we only have victory. I hope you join and unite your heart into this group. Glorious works of God. So when church getting into trouble, you face this trouble together with church. Then when, when God adds more prosperity and great joy in the church, your joy will be also become doubled and prosperous. Let us pray. Stand aside.